Hello and welcome to a brand new side LP blind of the beginner's guide uh, with Neo Rambler. This game I believe was gifted to me by Henk van der Linden so thank you very much Henk. Uh, he's been adamant that I play this game because apparently I'm going to enjoy it which sounds good. Um, he's also told me that I need to do it all in one sitting which is going to be a problem because I can only record so much footage on my hard drive before it fills up and unfortunately my current two external hard drives are in use. Uh, one's in use with my Wii U because I couldn't play Xenoblade Chronicles without it and the other one my dad's borrowed to put all of his movies on. I say movies with quotation marks in the air. Anyway so with that um, I can do it all in one sitting but I'm just gonna have to break the LP down into a few parts that's all. Hopefully not too many. Um, this game's only an hour and a half long apparently depending on uh, I suppose how fast you play it. Um, it's made by the same guy who did the Stanley Parable, which is one of my favourite games of all time, if not my favourite. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. It's got positive reviews. Other than that, I have absolutely no idea what it's all about. So just because it's the start of a week off that I've got currently, let's give it a go. Hopefully it runs all right as well. Um, I'll check the settings. Please make sure audio is on. I do believe it is on game. I did double check, but you never know. Okay, controls seem pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of gameplay mechanics to this game, apparently. It's, it's pretty much just a narrative, so... Hi there. Suppose... Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. Uh, My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Okay. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Well, that's an original now, these name. These games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. Yeah, I've and been there. his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. Well, metaphysical so just ones. Just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. Uh, and, okay. Uh, mostly it's just. Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Well, that's a very good but job. It's like, better than what I could even do. Even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Yeah, I was just about to say, the crates of the... Oh, there's a blob. the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. Well, a real person who's just starting wonder, off creating video what games. What was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. Well, why don't you just go and talk and to him exactly then? that's exactly what we're going to do here. Can he not just invite him to a so, pub or a bar and have a pint? It's 2008. Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. Well, I can he see why. There's not a lot of gameplay to them. He just makes them and then immediately abandons them, and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Well, if he's just beginning, then, Until suddenly, you know... one day, he just stopped. Oh, well, he probably got bored. That was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. All right, well, maybe and something else got in the way of life. taking this opportunity to gather all of his work together is because I find his games powerful and interesting, well, and good I'd for like you. this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Well, and, and then charge six pounds ninety nine for that. Also That's a bit cheeky. Find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d a v e y w r e d e n at gmail dot com. Well, that, okay, that requires that's effort. Introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This oh, he actually completed them. In November 2008. It's called game number one. Uh, okay, so are we actually in the year 2008? Because I've just looked out my bedroom window and it kind of still looks like the year 2016 still. Oh! Oh, cool! Alright, well... This game is called Escape from Whisper. 
And it's oh. one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Okay, is it like, well, I'm gonna get killed by something. All oh, right, there's a shooty button. Well, that's good. Okay, I can shoot things. Can I jump though? No, I can't jump. Okay, well, that's a bit of a bummer, but never mind. I suppose I can, uh, I can get by with that. But I'll, I'll give, I'll give Coda credit. He's immediately thrown you into a situation where I'm feeling a bit tense and a bit nervous. Why are they always hostile? Bloody alien life forms. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, uh, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't that is true. You load the gun when you run out of bullets. I'm running out of bullets? But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. Or maybe and he I just got bored and tried a different game. For what they are, rather than for what they're not. Well, okay. Well, you, you kind of locked me in here as well. I can't go back on myself. Oh, right. I can go this way. Well, maybe he just got bored. I mean, some creators or artists do, you know. I mean, like, they start up... Well, that's nice. Hey, look at that. Ah, the illusion's slow. You can see the bottom of the universe. Yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> illusion's slightly broken there. But at the same time, you never know. Maybe that is the bottom of the universe, you know. If you're going to get all metaphysical on me, old Davy boy, then uh, maybe Coda knew more than we let him... Well, maybe we knew... He knew... He's causing me to get brain hurt. But it's a very sharp image of space, though. I like that. That's a nice idea. Yeah. Perhaps he played a lot of Goldeneye on the N64, and then he just thought, hey, do you know what? I could do a Golden N64 level. And you're like, oh, okay, fair enough. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. Oh, yeah. Well, I just noticed it got a bit mazy. <laughs> sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Oh, well, thank you. You know. Can I not have free choice, by the way, old chub? Or, if you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> um, well, I, I might as well just have a mosey, you know? I mean, I appreciate you trying to skip things ahead, but I know you're the Stanley Parable guy, as you've introduced yourself as that, plus I already knew that to begin with, so... This is going to be one of those games where you can break the fourth wall and stuff, isn't it? Like I say you can break the fourth wall, you can just break things. And now I'm eternally lost, and this game's going to be... This is going to end, isn't it? I'm going to get completely lost, and then... Yeah, I'm just going to cut it short, aren't you? And I'm going to have to replay this over and over and over again, aren't I? I feel Stanley Parable vibes coming from this game, Davey. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the Stanley Parable, as I said before. But I was expecting something a little bit different, you know? I mean, sure, we've got a gun this time. That's slightly different. But, um... I, I don't know. I have. I've got myself lost, on. I? I'm going to have to start the game again, aren't I? Lame... I mean, yeah, it's nice that you like to sort of visit your friend's original game projects and stuff. I'll give him, I'll give you credit for being kind of like nice to him and paying a homage to him and all that. But so far, there's nothing really unusual about it. It's just someone who, at least first appearance's sake anyway, it's just someone who wanted to make games and got bored. That's all. Oh, well, anyway, at least we got to venture around and nothing interesting happened there. So, cool. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. I'm gonna the get game has this outside. narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Uh, okay. Somebody's gonna whisper in my ear, isn't it? I've only got the one headbutt that's working at the moment. Oh, hello. You there in the engine room? You could save us all. Can I? You mean I have to walk my way into it? Your body could stop the beam. And why would I want to do that? Well, I'd like some context. You know, I mean, it's like, you're whispering to me that if I do that, I'll say things. But A, I don't know what these things are. B, you could be lying for all I know. I, no, I, I, unless you're going to give me more context. I've got to go, well, you haven't given me much choice, have you? Well, that's just cheating, that is, isn't it? This is not a branching point, unfortunately. The only option is to step into the beam. Oh, you're going to be all smart on me, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you're going to be all like, oh, yeah, you can't do anything, can you? Right, no, I'm not. I'm just going to stop the game right now. I, I, ain't, I ain't playing. Nope. Nope. You can't make me do it. I mean it. I'm just going to stop. What are you going to do? We can just stand here forever. I've got things to do today. Actually, yeah, I have. I've got a couple of things to do. I've got to clean my rabbit out. Uh, I've got to um, order a birthday present for my sister and stuff. Uh, make a video for my YouTube channel. Yep. Okay, I'm currently doing that at the moment, but I've got to make another one for the Talis Principle. Uh, and I've also got some new NES games. I've got Sweet Home, the English translated version. That's pretty good. 
Uh, I've got uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on the NES. Like a sort of homebrew hack of the original Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive. They put it on the NES. It's alright. It's a bit clunky, but, you know, for a NES effort, it's pretty cool. Uh, I've got Earthbound Zero, which is the translated version of the original Mother game on the Famicom. I tried that. That's pretty freaky. You get attacked by a flying lamp. I mean, I was like, what? And then you're like in a house and it's full of poltergeist activity and stuff. It's really interesting. Uh, and then I've got Castlevania 2 Redacted, which is the fixed version of Castlevania 2 on the NES as well. You know, so I've got, I've got a few things to do today. Oh, yeah, I've got Xenoblade Chronicles X as well. I've got uh, Pierce Solar and... Uh, oh, God, I've really got to finish Shenmue as well. And uh, at some point I need to get a PS4 because I've got Retro City DX, a uh, physical copy of that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go anywhere, I'll All right, fine, I'll go to the beam then. <laughs> fine. Hooray, I died. Woohoo. Let me pause here for a second. Oh, what you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is boredom. probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. You get jump scared? Evil horror stuff? Oh, I've got to do it again, have I? Alright, okay. Oh! Oh! We just... Oh! So we just float. Well, it's not a jump scare, but it's, it's different. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Or he planned this in the very beginning know. and that's, this uh, wasn't no really an inspirational thinking, moment. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I've stopped floating. I mean, I'm still floating, but you know. Oh goody, brick walls again. He has this sort of like claustrophobic feel to his games, doesn't he? Yep. Oh! In this game, you can only walk backwards. Ah! Oh, okay, that's pretty key. I'll give him credit, that's... That's kind of cool. I thought there was something wrong. I was like moving forward and then I moved slightly backwards and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, that's... I'll give you that. That could be really scary. <laughs> that's really cool. I like that. Oh, okay. It's a novel concept. No, I'll give code of that. This is pretty cool. I mean... Oh! So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment uh, combining motion nice. and narrative. It's one of those it sort of like... advanced than the previous oh. game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Uh, yeah, it does. Give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Oh right. Okay. Well, that's. Uh... Oh wow. Okay. No, I like this one. This one's cool. This is kind of weird. I mean, it's not really a game though. It's. It's more. <laughs> to be not jump scared by jump scare. <laughs> it's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. No, it didn't. But that's Which not really a game, though, is, is it? Why it works because it gets out quick. Yeah, okay, but it's not really next one. <laughs> it's not a game, though, is it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I know with the Stanley Parable, you made the game minimalistic and stuff, and it was sort of like every game has this basic narrative and this basic gameplay elements and this basic plot device, and basically, no matter how you try to pad it out with other bits and bobs, this is a game. Yeah, but that's a game with a story, though. I mean, if you look back at older games, yeah, again, they had generic plot lines and generic mechanics, but they were fun. And the basic, basic principle of a game is that you try to complete it or get a high score, and you just get good at it. You just waste time on it, that's all. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Oh, there's a sign. I missed the sign. You are now entering death, aren't we? I'm so getting jump scared. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Look, as long as I don't get jump scared, I don't mind. I really don't. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Okay. Well, I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. That kind of makes sense, because it's on his game, mind, isn't like, it? That was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? 
True, true. Well, he's probably just one of those impulsive people that just, you know, again, like I said before, you know, you have projects and you, you know, you, you get into moments of inspiration. I know it's tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. Well, then why are you letting me go over and explore it then? Hmm? I mean, if you really, really, really were saying to yourself, you know, look, there's nothing over here, blah, 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 then why give me the option to do so? Okay, just make it linear. I've been saying this about a lot of games recently. If you just want to make a linear experience, make a linear experience. There's nothing wrong with it, providing that it's got some entertainment behind it, you feel accomplished at the end of it, and it tells a good story. You know, like Metal Gear Solid 5, for instance. You know, I haven't bought that. Okay, I don't have a PS4 to play it, or a powerful enough PC to play it. But my point being is, is that it's one of those games where I know, I know, it's been critically lauded and everybody loves it, and I am a huge fan of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. I really am. Um, but I haven't bought it, nor do I really want to play it. Not because it's a bad game or anything, but because it's an open world game where the narrative is more all over the place than it usually is. I'm not saying the narrative of the Metal Gear Solid games are actually, or Metal Gear games, I should say, really. I call myself a fan, I'm calling them the wrong thing, but anyway. Um, you know, the narrative isn't exactly the greatest things in the world anyway, but it's just like this whole open-ended thing, and it's just really sort of dull. Uh... Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So uh, why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press the use key on your gamepad, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. I don't have, oh, the A. But don't call it the use key, call it the A button. Uh, <laughs> you are a gate. Well, that's not the worst insult people have thrown at me. A room that's warm and nice and oh. full of little ideas for games. <laughs> Stand on a neck, staring at a bear for three hours. Was he partially Koda sort of... would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person but that it takes time to really see that. Well, then he needs to work on his sort of persona and body image then. There. Well, okay, fair enough. I mean, at least he's working on it, I suppose. But I'm not really getting that. I'm more just concerned with the fact that he's just got ideas and he's just executing them and seeing what happens. But there's that guy in Japan who made that one game. I forget his name, but he used to really hate video games back in the 80s. And then he made one game for the Famicom and it's like almost impossible to play. It's got like a ridiculous amount of challenges on it. It's really hard and like really twisted. Um, but it's also really compelling and you just want to play it and finish it. And it's kind of like one of those games where you either see it as an absolute piece of poop or you see it as a really creative, one-of-a-kind experimental game. And he only ever made the one and that's it as far as I'm aware. I forget his name now and I forget what the game's called. I'll have to look it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not... Fair enough, you know. I mean, if you, Davey, found this all interesting, then that's good for you, you know. That doesn't mean everybody is going to, though. Especially not at £6.99. Okay, I didn't purchase this game. Old Hank Van der Linden very kindly gifted it to me. But that's beside the point, you know? I mean... Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Uh, is go it? Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Well, it's a... Oh, I can't go back, can I? So, uh, oh, fine. I'll just open the door. Nope. There's a lever. All right. Oh, I can pull it. Oh, that's charming. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. No, oh, no, it's still dark and depressing. Okay, is there like another door that opens or something? Oh. Uh, okay. Hmm. Oh, is there a level on the floor? No, there isn't. Hmm, interesting. Um, no, I cannot solve it. It's a minimalistic puzzle. It's probably very simple. And me, near Rambler, the most overcomplicated thinker on the planet, or at least one of them anyway, I'm not sure about that, I'm still thinking on that one, uh, is completely and utterly stumped by a simple puzzle. <sighs> Goody, I'm going to be here for some time, long time. Oh, I think I get it. Ah, I see. Oh, okay. Don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. Oh. Uh, 
well, like puzzles where you have to think outside the box to solve. Uh, I'll get some mixed successes on that, but yeah, prepare for a long one, guys. <laughs> it's just going to take a while. I, 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 I'll give him credit, though. The, his choice of textures and choice of sort of background noise or music or whatever you want to call it is kind of spiritual. You know, it's kind of like so intriguing. That seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Yeah, I succeeded. Right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press the use key on your gamepad, a big it'll clown face is going to appear. Walls from this room. Do I really want to do that? Oh boy. Wow. Well, someone had a lot of time on their hands. It's kind of like inside Yugi's puzzle that? of Yu-Gi-Oh. There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And oh. then in this level, a, a dull, dull interior, interior hides, hides fantastic this fantastic <laughs> outer world. Yeah, fair enough. It's Either abstract way, enough. I, I like think it. That the point is the same. Is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing, or even yeah, but, that you're missing anything. Yeah. That's not your role as a player. No. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? To play the game and have fun. That's pretty much it. Or at least, I don't know. Oh god, not this again. I'm gonna get jump scared again, aren't I? It's gonna be Slender Man or. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this combined with the entering game from earlier tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. Oh, so he is. can be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Fair enough. Couldn't he not have just released it as a game and put it on sale and be like that Japanese guy that I was talking about earlier? The Great and Lovely Descent. Oh, uh, don't tell me he played on it. Oh, wow! Well. Yeah. Well, I've lost the house now. Was that the game? Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> I actually lost the house. That's pretty impressive. I like that. You could literally just move your finger at the camera and that's it. You've lost the house. Is that the whole Descent idea? I don't know. I don't have any feet though. Coda, you need to program feet. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Fine. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. Okay, that makes so sense. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Okay. I, I, I think I understand that. I, I don't know a lot about video game development though, so I'm not going to gonna start. all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Oh, the Valve Like one. all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why yes, so many very good that. games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with Oh, I like the pictures the over there. That's cool. Can I get well. the picture? Fair enough. I, 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 that's fine. I mean, the tools I... available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. Yeah, so you it, might it influences paying them. attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Yeah, I, I've noticed that there was some sort of angular design. I like the pictures and that picture there with the streets, the high street. I think it's a high street. And the knife and I like pictures like that, just odd things, moments in life, basically. And look, disabled toilets, which I can't get in because I'm not disabled. Does mentally disabled count? Ugh. Ugh. Apparently not. Now I'll give him credit. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean the Source Engine. You know, from my experience with Half Life, Half Life Two, uh, the other Half Life games, and probably soon Left for Dead Two. I'm sure it's pretty good at some things, like you say. You know. Oh, but, ooh. Oh, this is abstract. I like this. I, you see, I'm not afraid of abstract ideas. I suppose my fault, really, is um, I'm trying to make sense of the board. You know, because people go, oh, look, I'm abstract, I'm special. And you're like, yeah, you probably are, but... <laughs> and? <laughs> I suppose I'm just a bit of a party pooper, really, I guess. Yeah, my bad. Maybe because, I don't know, I, I'm boring and... and abstract myself and therefore I kind of like see myself in these games and I'm like yeah I just don't see the point you know and um, I suppose that's probably why I get sort of like meh about them 
Eh. Well, I'll give this game one credit. It's making me think deeply about my life, for better or for worse. It's making me reflect about myself and my choices and my... Oh, God. I don't even know what the end objective is. I'm just sort of doing this because I don't particularly want to fall to oblivion. Not that that's not going to happen. Plus, I like this. It's, it's cool. I like this. It's kind of like me. It's like just random things dotted around the place. There's no particular rhyme or reason why it's there. And if you fancy exploring, you can do. I mean, there's there's clearly some sort of path here. Or maybe there isn't. Maybe I, I believe there's a path and it looks like there's a path here because I'm making them one. But I'm making one out to be a path, you know? I'm trying to make sense of a world that has no sense to make. Yeah. Ooh, there's a black hole thing at the bottom there. Alright, okay, okay. I'm intrigued. I don't know how long we're allowed to do this for until David goes, No, pull the plug now, that's it. <laughs> Show's over. Got other things to play. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I was enjoying that. You know, I'll, I'll give him credit. It's compelling, it's hypnotic, it's interesting. It's not really a game per se, but then again, I suppose you could argue it is, you know, get to the bottom without falling off. I suppose you could argue, well, it's whatever. It, it could be that it's one of those games. Ooh, I saw multi colours over there. Could have been a glitch, could have been my eyes. But anyway, it's probably like something like, you know, oh, well, you know, the game is what you make of it type thing. You know, I just give you some stuff to work with, and uh, just like I have to work with an engine to make the game, you've got to make a game out of what I've just given you to play with. And you think, yeah, fair enough, I get that concept, but I like games that are made to be played in a particular way, with a particular style, with a particular story for you to, you know, interact with or, or play, and then. Um, uh, and then you take your take on it, you know. I don't like games where you have to make the story up yourself, like Minecraft, for example. I really don't like Minecraft very much. I like the I like the style of it, and I like what it's done for people, and I like that a lot of people like it, and it allows them to be imaginative and creative themselves. In other words, it's like an engine. I get that, and that's really cool. Um, but for me, it doesn't work for me, because I don't have that creative presence. I don't want to have to do the work of a game. I don't want to play a game where they say, right, here's the tools, you make the game yourself. I'm like... Well, that's just lazy. I just paid you money for an experience. Uh, but I was expecting this, and you didn't give me that. That's just lame. Even though Minecraft originally was free, so this isn't the best of examples. But um, I mean, Little Big Planet, for instance. You know, I mean, it was cool at first, but I just like and Mario Maker and all that. It's cool, but I don't really want to have to create my own game to play it. I want to play a game that you've made for me, so that I can enjoy it. I, I give me call me old fashioned or boring or simple, but I just prefer that. That's just how I roll. I hate games where you have to sort of do it yourself. It's just kind of like lame. But oh well, whatever. Anyway, we've got to the bottom and ooh, spiral stairs. But I'll give it credit though. I mean, as an experience though, I did experience something. So there's that. And it's very sort of like, again, abstract and artsy, I suppose. So, you know, I, I, I get it, I get it. Oh, you're going to alter my path, aren't you? Well, that's just me, isn't it? Oh. Is this kind of like a game where you have no control? It, basically, what I've just been saying, are you just sort of going, oh, well, if you want a game which has a linear path, then you have that linear path. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Uh, yeah, see, he's like mind, that. I think we're going to skip that. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. that. he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means uh. anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And good point, so that's what I was just saying. He did arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Wow, we had a lot of time on your hands then, sir. Yeah, but then again, he's just trolling you. He's like, oh yeah, playable games, here you go. Here's a box from the empty room, play it. I get his sort of metaphysical argument, but again, it's not that's not a game, is it? Again, you have to again it's that whole point you've got to make the game yourself. And you're like, yeah, I know there's a certain there's a certain element to war games where even if you're given something to play with and it's got a linear story and linear gameplay mechanics, the game is still what you make of it. You know, you don't have to you know, you play what you want to play, you play it in the way you want to play it given the limitations, and that's that, you know? And I, I get that. But I don't know, I'd rather have something that I can opinionate on and, and think about. 
if you know what I mean. Then sort of. But then again, so is this, isn't it? So, oh, well. yeah, fair enough, Coda. Okay, I get your point. Again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Is it? Um, okay. It's a bigger room. I think. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Uh, okay. I suppose in a way, yeah, I suppose you really can't argue with this. I suppose this sort of setup is designed so you can't really argue with it because no matter what arguments you give, the game kind of reflects that anyway and proves its point. In which case, okay, fair enough, cool. Doesn't mean I have to enjoy it though. <laughs> ah, no. but it's, it's interesting. I, I, I have to admit, I, I'm more intrigued in the patterns, really, the art, the art, the art impression of it, if there is one. I, I kind of like his design choices. They're kind of neat. Like, ooh, this is deep. Creepy, but neat. I'm not very good at listening though. So. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the buttons on your gamepad to respond. Uh, uh, okay, cool. You there, did you come from up above? What was up there? Yeah, there was these... F well, there was all three of the above. Can I press all three of them at the same time? Ugh. No, apparently not. Uh, two doors and switches. No, uh, did you have to go through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Uh, well, I say it was a puzzle, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I didn't solve it, someone else let me in. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, because they told me what the solution was. Oh, no, did they tell me what the solution was? I can't remember that. No, I worked it out, didn't I? They just told me it was a puzzle. But, of course I can remember how to do it. Oh, uh, well, why this one? Sorry. Yeah, maybe. All right, sorry to uh, sorry to bother you, uh, three gentlemen. I love your box heads, by the way. <laughs> Pretty neat. Right, well, I suppose I should walk to my impending death then. Impending death, or exactly the same room. Okay. Hello. How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Nope. I've been here this entire time. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can just sit in the black. You can just sit in the black space in the middle. Uh, okay, why would I sit in the black space then? Oh, it's plenty peaceful. It may not seem that way at first, but you'll come to think so in time. <laughs> Eventually, not because there'd be nothing else I could think about. All right, fair enough then. As long as nothing jump scares me. That's all I'm more concerned about. As long as nothing and so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. I have to be honest, actually, I forgot I was playing the game called The Giant Descent. I'm not going to lie, actually, I completely forgot about that. <gasps> Is this the black room? Is this the black room? Should I just stay here for it? Oh, no, it's a corridor. No, it's not a room, is it? Ooh. It's a lamppost. It is. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. Did he watch the Mitchell Horror? Here at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Oh, it's just a lamppost. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, 
with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. But is that only because you're telling me it's going to get clearer? What if it doesn't? What if it doesn't get clearer for me? It might, be got, okay. it might have got clearer for you at the moment. This game is connected to the internet. I don't... I don't want to do this. No. That feels like the Talus Principle. <sighs> Fine. A note. Ooh, what's it say? Hello. Nice room. Not. Well, that's a great note to get started with. Okay, what's this one So say? first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Oh, thanks for spoiling the illusion. This was the game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away, that I was doesn't like, mean it's better. I have to be friends with this person. In that retrospect, does... I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Yeah, because you found out how boring he was and oh, how weird his game was and they had no of point to him. If they're not doing anything for you, nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they can be a sense of loneliness. True. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. So you're saying he has trouble socializing with people? But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. I'm not really connected with him at the moment. I have to be honest with you. This idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the in-person <laughs> socializing. Cool. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much. is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I just saw a flying penguin. Let me tell you, it was the most majestic thing I'd ever seen. I don't feel like living because nothing will ever be as majestic as that. I never want to see again if nothing will ever be that beautiful again. I am now crying and plan on ripping my eyes out. I must now go do. I must now go to do that. I, again. It's not doing anything for me. That's the problem. I mean, you could argue, yeah, but you're reading all the notes. Well, yeah, because I want to see if it can do something for me. And there are some funny ideas and stuff, but again, it's not really what I would call a game. More of an experience, more of a sort of like delve into someone's mind. And for me, that's, I, I suppose you could argue, well, in that case, you know, in their mind, it is a video game. And you think, yeah, fair enough, no, I get that. But this isn't exactly the video game that I've built my conventions of a video game on, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, but anyway, yeah, I think I get the point right. I am out of here. I can't be asked to read any more messages. Obviously, there's one here. I don't know. I'm not really that fuss. As long as it's not a jump scare. I mean, if it is a jump scare, then fair enough. You know, I'll be like, oh Christ, that wasn't very pleasant. And it's like, oh yeah, what is down here? Look, what is down here? Well, it looks like it just goes on for eternity. Oh, I can't actually fall down there because there's invisible walls. I guess we're never meant to know. That can't be all that important. <sighs> but I, I like the idea though and you know the whole conception of oh this game's connected to the internet and people have left notes if you'd gone with that illusion that's pretty cool like as an illusion that's great but then old Davey had to break it and I was like oh well thanks for that <laughs> I suppose he's meant to because it's really just exploring Coda's ideas we're not really actually here to you know play Coda's games we're just here to see what he was thinking if it was a he it could be a she I don't know I think he said it was a he but yeah I can't be asked to read the messages I'll get bored Nice painting, though. I like that. That's nice. I'm not really, I, I, I'll tell you something now. This game's making me appreciate art. <laughs> I never usually appreciate art. Or at least I don't spend time appreciating art. But I'll give, I'll give this game credit. It's making me appreciate some creative capabilities and some ideas. Or at least it's having an influence on my mind where I'm thinking, hmm, 
that's striking. Hmm, that's nice. Hmm. So, you know, fair play to Coda for sort of presenting abstract pieces that actually make me go, hmm, this is interesting, as opposed to sort of going, hmm, this is rubbish. I mean, I'm not saying I'm completely fascinated and entertained, but some bits of it's good. I like that painting up there. That's, I don't know why. I think that's kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of the 90s and me playing Sonic the Hedgehog 3 a lot and getting stuck on the carnival level when you're playing a Sonic and you have to... There's like this, I don't know, it's like the second act of the carnival zone. And there's like this bit near the end of the game where you get stuck in this sort of like column of nothingness and there's this like... At the end of this level, we're platform. going to see the oh, puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Uh... Right. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment. Oh, that's what you meant. Reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. Oh, I see what you mean. Step back and connect the pieces together to grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Well, I, I'm not necessarily grasping onto the elusive bigger picture, but I kind of get what you mean. Like this whole metaphor of, um, you know, uh, you're going through. There's a psychological effect apparently that walking through doors actually has an influence at that moment of your mind. Like when you're like, for example, at school and you're going into class and you're moving around classrooms and you go into the next classroom, whatever troubles were behind you, or whatever joys or events that happened before you entered the classroom that got you in a state of happiness or sadness or uh, peace or anxiety or whatever. As soon as you go through a doorway, your mind kind of like sort of thinks to itself, okay, well, that's that all done with now. Let's deal with this new thing, if you know what I mean. So actual doorways have this psychological effect where your brain goes, all right, well, we'll deal with whatever we've experienced later. Let's deal with this new thing now. So as soon as you go through a doorway, it's like new idea time. And it, I can't remember what the effect's called, but I get that. So yeah, I mean, there's that is that moment of pausing because obviously you've got to wait for the doors to open. And then you close the switch, and then you go through, the door closes, and you flip the switch, and then you go through. So there is that time between places that you've got to clear your mind and go for the next one. But you kind of do it automatically, uh, as opposed to putting conscious thought into it. So I get that. That's that's a cool metaphor. Uh, not looking behind me. Oh, it's a typewriter. <laughs> I literally thought there was something chasing after me. Oh, okay, game. Uh oh, oh well, there you go. I, I was just looking at the typewriters. Hmm. It's kind of a hypnotic sound. I prefer clocks though, the ticking of clocks. Porn stars die too. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Fair enough. Porn stars die too. This is going to be this has got to be a horror themed game, isn't it? I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> Porn stars die too. I wonder if he ever spoke to someone called Bruno Mattai, the Italian film director that you know directed a lot of strange films, you know, strange Italian sort of Nazi porn films from like MacGuffin. See, like, this is it the whole game, and there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Okay. Oh. What furniture ought to go into the center of the room? Oh, I see. Alright, okay. I wonder why there's a well out there. And like, 
Is it a religious reason? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. This is the problem with abstract art. You know, if you can't interpret it and, you know, you can't really understand what's going on, then you kind of get bored. And it's not necessarily the fault of the person not being able to understand it. And it's not really the fault of the person who's trying to get you to understand what they're thinking. It's just what's known as a breakdown of communications. And basically, we all go through it. We all do it. I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. Everyone's guilty of it. And you just can't do anything about it except walk away and go to the next thing, you know? What furniture ought to go to the centre of a room? Oh, you know what? Let's be crazy. Giant hole in the ground. That's not a giant hole. That is a glass table. That's not a giant hole! Let's put a huge picture of a horse. <laughs> yes, let's do that. That's not a horse! Oh, game, you suck. Fine, uh. Tesla coils. Yay, Tesla coils. Look at that Tesla coil. Yes, I need a table. Uh, tables were invented in 1935. Yay, look at that. 1935 table. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Davy boy. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Well, from outside, by the well. Hello, please walk forward. Okie doggles. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. Well, uh, that's me, Bones, because my memory's absolutely awful. First, click on this table. But there's no table to click on. There's no table to click on! I can't click on it! I want to click on that table. That's not a table! Oh, it is a table. Oh, I see. It's one of those evil tables. Click on it. Which photo frames? How many photo frames are there? Oh, it's just that one. Okay. Now, turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on again. Okay. It's kind of like Simon Says. It's not really an ingenious... Now go to the left side of the sofa and move it over a little. Which sofa? This one? Finally touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Turn to the start to be taken back to your prison. Okay. Return. <laughs> this is Simon Says, basically, Coda. You know, been done before. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Ah. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Ah, Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen. Personally, Fair enough. I think it's awful. I like the rock textures. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he lets it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Uh, okay. Welcome credit. He's got a great way of creating um, scary sounds. <laughs> I won't lie, I am unnerved. I really am. Oh, okay. Hello, who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you after you escape the prison. That's very fourth wall breaking. Uh, 
<laughs> I was in the escape situation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. Yes, that's what you I was know, thinking. So we're still actually in the prison, so aren't we? Are Coda talking to himself? So basically, it's him trying to communicate with others, but he ends up communicating with himself? Uh, no. I'm just pressing random buttons now because I think I get this. He's basically just he, he, he can't. He's just caught in his own mind, basically. Oh, uh, we did this in um, Soma. You know, like the whole sort of like, oh, there's you know Simon One, Simon Two, that sort of MacGuffin. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After sort of all of awesome. the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. I mean, we all want that. We all get doubts and fears and stuff, and we all seek that, so... Yeah. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? I don't want to know, because Coda's not a normal person. <laughs> I don't really want to know. 